I'm going to ask you to stand when it's appropriate when I mention where you got to know Paul and, and what he may have done or affected your life. First, Nebraska. He was born in Nebraska, right? Anybody from Nebraska here that knew Paul from those days? Wow. Anyone from Stuartville, Minnesota? There they are. And you've been friends for what? Probably 65 years. 65. Maybe even better. 48. 48. Wow. I think that sounds like 70 years, doesn't it? <laughs> Virginia, Minnesota. You served in Virginia. Thank you for being here. Ontario. His days in Ontario. You better stand too. Thank you for being here. And from his radio, now this one, though, no, stand carefully because there's a lot of you, it's an old church. <laughs> wow. Thank you. you. Please be seated. Those of you who are baptized by Paul, your daughters, his daughters, <laughs> some of them aren't sure because they don't remember that. <laughs> Those who of you who were confirmed by Paul. Okay. Um, please be seated. Those who are married, Paul performed your marriage. The rest of us are single, I think. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Paul got to know a lot of clergy people over the years, and uh, the clergy and staff. Thank you. And uh, if you're a family, Paul, if you please stand. Paul, he didn't like any other hymnal except the Lutheran hymnal. He didn't like any service unless it was from the Lutheran agenda or the Lutheran uh, companion to the Lutheran hymnal. And in the beginning of the uh, funeral service, this rather long address is to be given. So I'm going to read it at the request of the family. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower, and is cut down. He fleeth as a shadow, and continueth not. Behold, thou hast made my days as a handbreadth, and my age as nothing before thee. Verily every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Thus saith the Lord, Dust thou art, and to dust thou shalt return. By one man's sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all that have sinned. Every man that hath this hope in himself purifies himself even as Christ is pure. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he is done, whether it be good or bad. Therefore, beloved, let us escape the corruption that is in this world through lust, and seek now, in the day of salvation, the one thing needful which shall not be taken away from us. Let us fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life, whereunto ye were called. May we be found in constant readiness for the final summons, ever waiting for our Lord and purifying our souls in obeying, obeying the truth through his Spirit, that through his power resting upon us, 
we may overcome the world and be counted worthy at last to reign with him eternally in heaven. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, and hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. Being delivered for our offenses, he was raised again for our justification, and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. He is the first fruits of them that sleep, and saith, I am the resurrection of the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet he shall live, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. This corruptible must put on incorruption, this mortal must put on immortality. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. And we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also hear and, and hear the, bear the image of the heavenly. The image of our Lord Jesus Christ who will change our vile body that it may be fashioned unto his glorious body. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Thank you, Pastor Kangas. First of all, a, a bit of a disclaimer. Emotions are like waves. You're doing fine. And then all of a sudden that wave comes and just washes over top of you and knocks you down. That's what's going to happen to me. And I would suggest that, I mean, I hate it myself. I hate snivelers who are talking to people and it makes me feel uncomfortable and I don't like it and I say grow up well what I'm going to say to you if you can't take the emotion there's the door feel free to use it Pastor Bittner and I became friends in 1959 although neither of us knew it yet I was six and his family moved to Desboro, Ontario to their first church Twenty years later, my wife and I moved into the same parsonage. In 1979, that was my first church. That is what made us friends, and our hearts have been beating together ever since. Thus he gave himself the moniker, Paul the Elder, P-T-E, and I became Paul the Younger, P-T-Y. In 1983, we were both at Missouri Synod Convention in St. Louis, and I was at the microphone having announced my name and where I was from. And guess who showed up right in front of me? I couldn't hardly even see the stage. Yep, PTE. And guess what he did? He took my picture. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> later on, years later, he threw my hat into the ring to be pastor at Zion in Mondovi. For a number of reasons, I declined. But of course, Pastor Bittner wouldn't let that rest. Call him again! Call him again! He said. They did, and he phoned me numerous times to tell me why I had to accept the call. I accepted the call almost 17 years ago, and on the day of my installation, he brought with him this huge Canadian flag, and as others were taking pictures of my family by the altar, 
he raced up behind us and held up that flag as big as he could. I've always admired his energy and spunk and his tower climbing. He was fearless. And he was known over numerous states for his ability. I would be leaving fingerprints in the metal at a hundred feet if I could get that high. He would just clamber on all of it. He was born on Christmas Day. And so Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 14, was always very precious to him. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David, he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David a Savior has been born to you. He is the Christ, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. In your bulletin, we sing, O come, all ye faithful, verses 1 and 2. <clears throat>
Jim Stinson and Mel Wepler, I buried while I was at Desperate. More connections. The Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 10, beginning at verse 13. <clears throat> they brought young children to him that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased, and he said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not. For of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. We sing baptized into thy name, most holy, verses 1 and 6. Imagine now 
as I read this, how he's standing in front of the throne of God, God and telling him his love for him in person. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set the glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. His youngest daughter would go around the house singing, Holy, 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 over and over. Did I say over again? <laughs> she loved that hymn, and if for no other reason, it became special to him. Who doesn't love that hymn? Listen to Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. In Revelation chapter 4, verse 8, And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. We sing holy, 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 verses 1 and 3. Or not. But he did try. 
Romans 13. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good and thou shalt have the praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is of evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. We sing, Christ is the sure foundation, verses 1 and 3. Thank <laughs> you. 
not only that, but not one, but two. The second one said, made miles shorter. And when I had seen him the last time, he said, by the way, how many have I given you? I need to know which ones I've given to you because I need to make you some more. <laughs> no, the sad news is, new cars don't have CD players. <laughs> but I didn't tell Paul. <laughs> the other thing is how ironic is that um, we all know that there's sort of a protocol you don't take pictures in church. Well, Paul didn't agree to that. <laughs> you found out a convention, we could pass that rule along. And so it was at the last installation over at Mondovi that, uh, so it was that while things were going on, the service was going on, Paul was up taking, making, taking pictures. And so it was. When I got here this morning, I put on the suit, I just picked out a closet. And so anyway, you check your coat pocket to see what had been left in there last. And what did I find? But two pictures that Paul had given me from the last installation. So anyway, what a blessing. This man understood what it was to be a, a prophet, or not, a, or not a prophet, but to be a man of God. And he touched lives that were jacked in here because he touched our lives. And he touched the brotherhood, those of us who pastor, but also, more importantly, all of you as God's people. And so we say, as we say on Easter morning, the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. became a favorite. He had so many that were his favorites. Most of them he had memorized. I think he had the entire hymnal memorized. I really do. And for again, for a pretense, drop of a hat, he would recite all 15 verses to you if you had the patience to be there. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 to 17. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise again unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished under all good works. In Ephesians chapter 2 and then chapter 4, and are built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in all. We sing the church's one foundation, verses one and two. <laughs>
can imagine how the time of Easter was such a joyous time for him. He believed with all his heart that as Jesus rose from the grave and lives, <coughs> God bless you. <laughs> so will he. And he believed the words of Jesus. Those who live and believe in me will never die. <clears throat> Luke chapter 24. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. We sing the hymn, I Know That My Redeemer Lives, verses 1, 2, 7, and 8.
but unto all those that love his appearing. We sing for all the saints.
invite all of you back tomorrow to sing in church. <laughs> Through the years, Paul made many friends in the ministry, and one of his dearest is Reverend Roland Miley. And uh, they were very instrumental in working together on ministry to uh, German people in Russia, correct? Thank you. Please come. <coughs> I don't have to tell you this, but I know that Paul was a warrior for the Lord. He believed in his heart that it is through God's word that we become his children, knowing of his grace and forgiveness that he has earned for us on his cross, where he died for our sins and rose again and ascended into heaven. And now I'd like to say just a few words in memory of Reverend Paul Bittner, Pastor Paul Bittner. I first got to know Pastor Bittner when Dr. Wallace Schultz brought Dr. Harold Kalnich to Concordia University in Mequon, Wisconsin. The president of the South Wisconsin District at the time Dr. Edwin Silflo, he's still alive, who was looking for someone to translate Bishop Collins' lecture from German to English, and I volunteered. I was relieved, to tell you the truth, when I could translate one sentence at a time, rather than doing simultaneous translation, which I feared tremendously. But Pastor Paul Bittner and several of his laymen were attending the lecture of Dr. Kalnich and afterwards posed for a picture with Bishop Kalnich. And they hoped that he would help them to do an exploratory trip to the former Soviet Union to find out the needs of any remaining Lutherans, which uh, most of them were of German background. The trip took place, but had to be aborted in Riga, Latvia, when the government collapsed and tanks rolled through the streets. All communication broke down, but thanks to Pastor Bittner's amateur radio friends, the team was able to send word that they were all right, and I believe maybe even talked to their relatives, and subsequently were able uh, to evacuate safely. Sometime later, I received a call from Pastor Bittner requesting that I go with him and his team to another exploratory trip, this time to German-speaking areas in Siberia. I have to interject something here. Pastor Bittner not only kept his bulletins, but he also kept all the yearbooks uh, at the seminary. I started the seminary in 1957, my first year, and it was his last year at the seminary. And when he saw me at the seminary as a freshman, he said, this is that German kid <laughs> and and uh, uh, when uh, Bishop Collins came years later, he got out his, his annual and he looked up who I was. Um, I don't think I met him in 1957 when I started, but I sure met him later on. Uh, sometime later, I received a call from Pastor Bittner requesting that I go with him and his team on another exploratory trip. And I think uh, Dr. Schultz, Dr. Wallace Schultz, said the Lusenauer speaker was also part of this. And this is the time when a German-speaking uh, person was hesitant to go to Siberia. And I said to him, you've got to be crazy. I am not going on a trip to Siberia. Um, but he convinced me that my ability of uh, speaking German fluently would be very helpful 
And so I went uh, to Siberia with him. And also, I might say this was the time when we started mission work in uh, Kazakhstan, uh, which was a former Soviet Republic. And, uh, uh, and the rest of the, we had some problems with getting, arranging uh, tra transportation. Uh, I, everybody wanted to go back to Moscow uh, after we had been on the Trans-Siberian Railroad for two and a half days. And uh, I didn't think it was so bad, but when I got to my hotel room, the room was starting to move. <laughs> uh, needless to say, uh, we did go to uh, Alma'ata at the time, today it's called Almaty. Um, at that time it was the capital, now the capital has been moved to Astana. And uh, for, uh, also we went there because Pastor Bittner and his uh, amateur uh, radio skills helped him to make contact with a man by the name of Gennady Hronin. And he helped us when we came to Almaata. He arranged for housing and for food and everything. And that's why I'm here today to talk to him, to talk to you about uh, Paul Wittner and Gennady Hronin, who is now a uh, doctor of theology uh, and a Lutheran pastor in a, in a Missouri Civil Mission in Kazakhstan. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Pastor. <coughs> Pastor Bittner shared Psalm 1 at the ordination of Gennady Pona in Kazakhstan. And I have to tell you, I've been practicing that name for two days now to say it again. <laughs> More than once, one of the one of the towns you talked about, I wanted to say after you said those towns, I wanted to say the <laughs> Psalm one, I will read it again because yes, I know Pastor Louis read it already, but it's in my script, and he didn't know it was going to be in my script. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteousness. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. We sing the hymn, Now the Light Has Gone Away, verses 1, 3, and 5.
discussed in our council meeting that next year is going to be the 155th year of the founding of St. John Congregation. And as part of that, we wanted to celebrate Pastor Bittner's ordination. We were going to celebrate his 60th, but it would, be, it would have been his 61st at that time. He was ordained in uh, nine, well, what, 1958. And uh, I asked Paul, do you want to preach or do you want to have somebody else preach? He said, I want Wallace Schultz to preach. <laughs> so Wallace Schultz, you're preaching. <laughs> Mary asked that I say a few words, which we will do. And first of all, ham radio operators, I am K0EOJ. <laughs> 1962. That's sort of like a Elks Lodge or a Masonic Lodge, if you know. It's a very tight group. There's nothing wrong with it. That's just how that functions. I did not know of Paul Bittner until 1971. I had been busy promoting like he was. He was always promoting something. And I taught some radio theory in West Africa, then in New Guinea. And so I put a little advertisement in the ham radio magazine that I was looking for donated equipment. And lo and behold, when he saw that, I think he went into orbit. <laughs> and from then, we were off. And so our first project, I think, was in Brazil. I don't remember the whole story. The point today is not ham radio. The point today is Jesus Christ and how he works in us, which I think every pastor would agree, and they would say with me, I will read it first, and I'm going to have them say it with me after I'm done, hoping they know it. <laughs> I am crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Now here's the quiz. I am... Crucified with Christ, nevertheless, it is not I who live, but Christ who lives in me, and the life I now live, I live by faith in him who loved me and gave himself for me. Okay, briefly, how does this apply to Paul Bittner? Paul Bittner, in fact, did come um, to the Soviet Union. I was sent in there by the Senate some years before to see whether we could penetrate that area which had been ruled by atheism for since 1917, which was a long time. And that was a very, very impenetrable place. So after I worked there for almost a couple of years, he got behind me pretty much paired up with me in amateur radio, which worked quite well. So now I won't go through all these details, but I will kind of saddle up there with where Roland was at, and here's kind of what happened. We got together, Bishop Kelnish made the arrangements, we went into sea into, uh, into uh, Tomsk, T-O-M-S, Tomsk, O-M-S-K, and then on to Tomsk, and then to uh, Almaty, which is in Kazakhstan, which is right north of India and right west of China. It's actually about halfway around the world. So, when we got there, Paul was busy, and I, it was very good. He, we were working together, and he had a special interest in meeting hams and so on and so forth. When we got, here's how God works. When we got to Kazakhstan, the arrangement had been made for us to meet with a member, a woman in fact, who represented the German Lutheran Church, who had, which had been taken into exile several thousands of them in 1939 when Hitler and Stalin didn't get along. That's another story all its own. So they were in there, and they were, many were down in Kazakhstan, so when we landed in, by jet in this country, two people came to the plane. One was this Lutheran woman who represented the Lutheran, Lutherans in exile for many years, and the other was a man by the name of Gennady Honey. 
But you've heard the name. It's not easy to spell. G N A D D J I Pony. K H O K K H K H O N I M. Gennady Oni. Now this is where the plot thickens, and we'll get over this real fast. Here's how this works. We thought, I thought, we were going to meet with this lady. We did. I did meet with her. Gennady Honedin was an atheist at that point. He, had, he didn't go to any church. He was, he was I, I shouldn't say so much he was an atheist. Uh, he, he, he was not a, a Christian believer at all. And he, and he said that. And, but Paul, through this radio contact, they kept to be very good friends. And then shortly after while we were still doing this work, far in there in Siberia, there was the International Lutheran Layman's League Convention. So I had to come home. He had to come home. He said, let's bring Gennady along. Now here's an interesting thing. I don't know how this worked. We're on the jet over the Atlantic. And they decided that Paul, that Gennady Honey needs better clothes. Paul said, don't worry. It, some way in the restroom, I don't know how they pulled this off, they got the suit off of Paul and onto <laughs> Gennady so that when he arrived in the U.S., he was ready for the convention. True <laughs> story. And then this continued to unfold, and they kept their relationship up, and this man who had... Um, let me back up just a little bit. Just give, just give me a couple seconds. So, Gennady told me, he said when he was about 35, he didn't believe in anything. He was not interested in the Christian faith at all. But he went through such a big crisis in his life, the Soviets were very tricky and very clever. And so they made sort of a, a building where you could go and worship. It's sort of like the United Nations God. There's a special room in the United Nations. You believe in some God, you just go in there and whatever you do. They had that. He went in there. He was searching. So he wasn't without any interest. However, God, as every pastor knows here, every pastor sitting here th thought when they were one time they were going to be a professor of Greek or something, and God changes those ideas pretty quick. You know, what God does, what you propose, God takes care of that. So that's how this worked. Gennady Honin came to Fort Wayne Seminary, became a pastor, returned, Received a earned doctor's degree. He is now the key person working in Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, and the key person he calls me regularly. He works. He doesn't work in China much, but every place north that he can work. There is, I, I don't think it's over. It's not overstating to say there is nobody like him in that part of the world because he's multilingual. He has the contacts. United Bible Society. Anybody that needs the top man over there, could they call him? And it is through Paul Bender. You know, we don't give God credit, the Holy Spirit gets the credit. You know, the, the Holy Spirit used Paul Bittner to bring this man along into the faith, into the church, and now he is a missionary in a very critical area of the world, and indispensable in every sense. So that's why the Holy Spirit was working. We don't think he's working. Every pastor here understands this. Things get done that we don't even conceive of, Therefore, to close my little talk, I'm going to ask all of you who just memorized this a few minutes ago to say it together. <laughs> I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, it is not I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by faith in Him who loved me and gave Himself for me. All the credit goes to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, Dr. Schultz. Amen. The ladies of the house church, where Pastor Pitner went, was obviously, among others, sang this hymn. The Sim also introduced the Lutheran Hour. We sing Beautiful Savior, verses 1 and 2.
Matthews Lutheran Church in Hanover, which was also my first vacancy when I was there. When traveling to Hanover, every week he met a priest going the opposite direction. So meeting Pastor Bittner, he wanted to find out more about this priest. So when he started to meet him, he pulled crosswise into the road and it stopped him. <laughs> just to find out more about him. <laughs> he was such a deep, deep man. I can say this now. We'd be here for a couple of more hours. There's just one more theme that we really haven't touched, and that's his patriotism. He loved to sing patriotic songs, pages after pages after pages. If you don't believe me, ask Trinity's organist, Ruth Gracie. She knows all about that. He learned to love this particular hymn in Ontario. All his girls had to memorize it, and he used it in many grave sites. Savior again to that dear name we raise. And we sing it now. Uh, 
um, stay at church. A luncheon is prepared and served for you, and it will be served immediately following the service for those who, who stay. You can partake immediately in that. Shall we stand for prayer and the Lord's prayer and Almighty and most merciful God, in whose hands are all the children of men, teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom, and give us grace to live by faith in thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and do what our hands find to do, that when he who is our life shall appear, we also may appear with him in glory. To thy fatherly goodness we commend those whom thou hast afflicted with this act of thy providence. Let not, let the pains of their bereavement be softened by the assurances of your holy word. Cause the fruits of this their chastening to be righteousness and peace. Let the removal of their beloved serve to direct our affections heavenward that they may seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth. Be thou the, God, the Father of the fatherless, and the helper of the widow. Remind them of thy gracious covenant of old, and let not thy mercy depart from them. <clears throat> Fill them with thy blessed promise, that all things shall work together for good to them that love thee. May they not sorrow as those who have no hope, but have abundant consolations for all their griefs, and far more exceedingly and eternally weight of glory for all their suffering in this life. These blessings, and all others, which may be needful for us and for all men, we humbly ask in the name and for the sake of our blessed Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to the rest from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Amen.
pray. Please take your bulletins along. And uh, as, the, as we recess, we'll ask the congregation to stand.